Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about threading, and uh, this is kind of an important way to, to give your game um, life, because right now, every time your program hits a scanner, it pauses, right? The entire program waits for the user to type an input and nothing happens. And uh, if we can use a separate thread, aside from our main thread that runs all the time and is constantly doing calculations, we can do things like we can provide duration effects, um, we can have monsters that are walking around um, while the user is sitting at the prompt. You know, so maybe the user is sitting at the prompt, a monster moves into the room and attacks the user. Um, right now, we don't have any combat in the game, but uh, we'll probably figure out a way to build combat in, possibly. Um, to where combat, once you attack something, you know, every five seconds a new combat route is initiated until you either run away or die, right? Uh, so we are going to need a separate thread, uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this thread to populate our game with monsters, because we're going to want these monsters to appear in the game without having to summon them, right? So um, I've created a file called monsterlokes.txt inside of text files, and right now it just has two lines name colon dragon and this is the room number I wanted in I wanted in five and then name colon troll and I'm gonna want that in room one okay so create that text file because we'll be using this to sort of populate our game and, and uh, sort of decide where we want things to appear um, and once something is killed um, it will the way we, I've got it set up <clears throat> once you kill a monster it will automatically repopulate the room after a certain number of seconds okay all right, so uh, here's kind of how threading works, if I can find it. Um, it's one of these, here we go. Um, what we've got now is we've got our main thread, and that starts with public static void main. And every time there's a scanner, everything stops. And uh, once the user types something in, the game processes and it keeps moving through one step at a time. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a secondary thread off to the side that runs all the time. And regardless of the scanner, we've still got processing that's constantly happening on the side. Okay? So um, I've created a uh, class called Monster Thread. All right? And I'm even going to give you this class to download it if you'd like. I mean, if that's an easier way to do it and you want to grab the class and use it, uh, it's not a problem for me at this point uh, because we'll be modifying this class quite a bit. So uh, this is the thread class you can download on downloads.linuxclassroom.com, and you could just create your monster thread class uh, based on that if you'd like to. Um, and But let's just walk through it real quick, okay? So, uh, because you have to start it as well, it won't just work. So we've got this uh, method I've got called uh, start monster thread, and it creates a new thread that's a while loop that just calls populate game, it waits one second, and then it calls populate game again, okay? So every second, this is just going to call populate game no matter what is happening right now, all right? And we can create different threads that work at different intervals, it's not a problem. Um, okay, so here's our populate game, and it's setting an int room mob count to zero. We're going to um, make sure that the uh, NPC database, uh, we don't need this line at all, actually, uh, for this, because our NPC database is initialized at the very beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to delete this. Okay. Um, but we do create um, a list that's of lines. It's an array list. And um, monster thread accepts a instance of the game logic class. So I'm, that's just how I'm doing it. I've got game logic current GL, and when we create the monster thread, we pass in the game logic instance that we've been using and just call it current GL, current game logic. And it gives us access to all the methods inside of game logic and all of that that we can use. Okay. Um, and that's just how I decided to do it. Um, so anyway, um, we're going to read monster locations into an array list just like we did uh, for the map. We're going to scan through it. We're going to split it by spaces. All right, and if the first word equals name, there are only two lines in this, right? We're going to go through all the rooms. We're going to loop through our rooms. Um, we're going to see what room um, it's referring to, right? And in this case, uh, it's going to loop through all the rooms, and it's going to check the room number, and it's going to see whether or not the uh, second array position, well, the, th the second index, 
third position, right? Um, equals, you know, the number we're looking for. So in this case, uh, five is what's pulled. Okay, that's the third. That's at array position two, and uh, we parse it to an integer because the room, the number is an integer, so we need to compare like things. Okay, and so if it's going to loop through the rooms, and when it gets to five, it's going to say, okay, wait, let's do something. And then it's going to loop through all the monsters that are inside of room five, all the NPCs, and it's going to check to see if the ID equals what's at word one. So it's going to check that room to see if any of the NPCs have an ID of, you know, words one, which in this case is dragon. Okay, if it is, we're going to increase room mob count. All right, now if you don't have this, every second it will add a new dragon to the room. Okay, and that will very quickly overwhelm your machine. When I first wrote this, I kind of messed up my for loops, and all of a sudden the fan started spinning on my machine, and Java was sucking up 500%. I've got like eight cores on this thing, you know. Um, and so if you're not careful, you kind of want to stop this. You don't want to just constantly generate monsters, you know. Um, now, so if it finds one, it'll implement room mob count. Now, if room mob count equals zero, in other words, it looped through the room five, it looked for dragon, it didn't find one because it would be zero because this never got triggered. All right, we're gonna loop through the rooms. Once again, we're gonna find room five. All right, and we're gonna add a new NPC based on the word that's in the file, dragon, right? And we're gonna um, add a new NPC dragon to the room NPC stack. That's it. Okay, and so if you run this, um, here's the upshot. All right, I'll type look. Let's go ahead and move north and see what happens. And you can see here's that troll in room one. All right, so there's a troll in room one. I'll type look troll. He's there. Okay, and uh, this you'll notice there's only one. It's been running every second and it's finding a troll and therefore it's not adding a new one. Um, if I were to destroy this troll or kill it, which we'll do in the next video, you'll find that it will repopulate after it gets killed. Okay, so uh, good luck getting that thread going. Having a separate thread on the side that is always processing is really what gives your game life. Okay, so uh, good luck getting that working and uh, in the next video I think we'll probably implement combat.